listen to the vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes, and I'm very happy to have Miss Terry Bolo here with me. And uh, she is an actress, and she's been in some quite memorable films. And uh, I'm I'm gonna let her talk a little bit about herself, but uh, we got some other subjects we found out we wanted to talk about. So uh, tell us a little bit about you. Well, I'm uh, yeah, I've been working in uh, the entertainment business for um, gosh. 40, 50 years. I'm retired now, um, but I was in a lot of really interesting films. I did a lot of background work in small roles, and I was also a stand-in for a couple of actresses and also a lot of children because I'm short. So I was a stand-in for children and a lot of things, including the, um, the Olsen twins. And I worked with uh, Julia Duffy from uh, the Newhart Show and Designing Women for 10 years. And um, I was had some featured little parts in um, Carrie and Big Wednesday, uh, the surfing movie, and Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And um, so those are kind of the ones that people who who are fans of those movies they they know me, they recognize me. So, like I said, I, I found I had a fan base <laughs> based on some of those films. But I've worked on so many interesting uh, cult films like Mommy Dearest and Scarface and 1941 and um, oh gosh, yeah, it, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I've really in, enjoyed my time, but um, I'm happily retired now and. I don't want to get up early. <laughs> I don't want to drive out to some location miles away where I don't know where I am schlepping our loads of clothes and having 20 year olds in headsets say, go sit over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> oh man, I had a good time with it though. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we were talking earlier before we got started and uh, you're really into nutrition and things like that. And I I'd love to, get some advice from you because i like i told you before we started uh, i'm diabetic and had to change quite a bit um that was about 70 pounds ago wow good for you had, that's awesome it's helped get me off a lot of medications and i, I want to tell you even doctors get things wrong from time to time um yeah. i think my sugar is perfect right around 110 120 uh, they want you at 70 but when i get like at 80 I start shaking and uh, almost go into a coma. So I have to, you know, eat something full of sugar to build it back up again. So she had put me on glipicide, which, you know, drops it quite a bit. And uh, I don't think I needed it. <laughs> but, you know, you, you uh, I'm like you. I had to start finding new recipes. You know, we uh, discovered spaghetti squash um, would make a lasagna out of uh, cabbage different things like that so uh, tell tell us what your repertoire is <laughs> well i i was um like i said i was working as a stand-in so it was a pretty steady job so i had good health insurance but when my last stand-in job ended and i wasn't getting work um my i lost my good sag insurance and i was on four different meds at the time let's see i was on um something for gastroesophageal you know i was i was on lipitor i was on mm -hmm. um Prilosec. I was on, um, let's see, some kind of antidepressant and uh, I don't know, something else. I was on four different meds and I realized that these are really expensive and I couldn't afford to keep these. And so I just thought, I need to get well, I need to get healthy. So I started reading about uh, diet and nutrition and this has been like 20 years now. And um, I went to uh, the, the last time I had all my <clears throat> numbers done and everything, my triglycerides, my doctor said to me, these are the best numbers I've ever seen. Wow. Um, what? She goes, yeah, ever. And she says, what are you doing? And I said, well, I stopped eating sugar and white flour and processed vegetable oils. Mm -hmm. She went, oh. <laughs> So I think those are the three most important things that people need to give up. And, and that's really hard because people eat this stuff every day. Mm -hmm. And um, so sugar is so highly refined that it should be classified as a drug. And it's really, really bad for you. And um, white flour, which has no nutritional value at all, turns to sugar in the bloodstream, so it spikes your insulin. Mm -hmm. And um, 
processed vegetable oils, you know, we've been taught to believe are better for us, but they're not because they're so highly processed. They're, they're practically plastic, you know, so um, when we're talking about canola oil, corn oil, um, safflower oil, soybean oil, cottonseed oil, these are all highly um, processed and they're used in a lot of um, uh, processed packaged foods. And they're so superfluous in the food chain because they're, they're um, subsidized by the government. So they're cheap fillers and they have to use them. So we're being forced in corn and soy, you know, which neither one are really that good for you. Corn, if you're eating organic corn, you know, yeah, it's, it's real food. But when they make all these products, byproducts out of it, um, you know, it, that you use for fillers and, and stuff, it's, first of all, they're GMO, soybeans and corn, and they're covered with the glyphosate, um, which is uh, highly carcinogenic. And even non GMO foods are sprayed with glyphosate to, uh, to um, desiccate the, the plant for an earlier harvest. So it dries it out so they can harvest it faster. So we're getting glyphosate all the time. You know, even if you eat organic, you know, you, you're not guaranteed. But also we were talking about um, supplements. You know, we, we have to eat supplements. So you have to make sure that they're all um, uh, real food. Try to buy organic vitamins and make sure it says real food. Even if you buy, uh, if, if your vitamin C says um, ascorbic acid on it, that also is derived from corn, believe it or not. Oh, wow. So it has to be whole food whole look, look at it has to say whole food supplements and see all the plants that it comes from otherwise it's either synthetic or derived from um, corn so um, it's been a long journey and you know i've learned to cook and um cooking is such a wonderful thing it's it's a very human thing human beings have been preparing their food since we've been on the planet and it it's an act of love and and it's um it's a sacred act, you know, we're, we're nourishing our bodies and um, making sure that they, they get everything they need. I mean, we are all so um, starved for real nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of what people eat every day, there's hardly any nutrition in them. So we're getting a lot of diseases. A lot of diseases that we see today are modern diseases from our diet. And people say, oh, well, we're living longer. Yes and no. I mean, when you average out the age of, of when people die, you know, it's average. So they take the highest and the lowest. So there was a lot of infant mortality. Um, there's a lot of people dying young. A lot of people couldn't get to the doctor for certain things. So, but many people live to old age, but now we, more people may be living longer, but because, um, you know, we've, you know, children aren't dying, you know, that early. But we're sicker. We're living longer, but sicker. Look at all the people in nursing homes and people on all these meds. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so got it, a lot of diabetics in this country. It it's just exploded diabetes. It it really has. And you know, it was kind of rare. The five main reasons uh, people pass away now are well, heart disease is number one, mm -hmm. uh, cancer. Number three is iatrogenesis, which is medical. <laughs> People die from medical mistakes and um, mm. prescription drugs. And then there's um, diabetes and um, strokes. And these are all modern diseases. These things were all almost unheard of 100 years ago. Wow. Well, if you don't mind me asking, what was your triglycerides? You know what? I really don't understand what those numbers mean. I really well, don't. Normal is 150. Yeah, I don't even know. She just said it was the best she'd ever seen. Wow. which surprised me, which means, okay, you know, there must be something to this. <laughs> and it doesn't mean I don't ever eat a piece of bread, you know, once in a while. I mean, I will, but I don't eat it every day. Um, I try to eat mostly meat and vegetables and I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a vegan or vegetarian, but I do advocate you know, eating well-prepared, well-raised, pastured, grass-fed, organic food meat and vegetables and dairy products. I don't like to demonize food that we've been eating for thousands of years. I mean, we've only been, um, what, agrarian and, you know, raised, raised livestock for food in the last 10,000 years and planted crops. Um, before that was all hunter gatherer, you know, for thousands and thousands of years. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, if someone wants to cut out meat and dairy, you know, that's their choice. 
but everything else should be good food and make sure you're getting, you know, the protein you need and whatever. But I, I know a lot of vegans and vegetarians who are overweight because they eat so many crackers and bread and pasta and bagels yep. and they're eating a lot of junk. My so, problem was fried chicken. <laughs> Almost every day I was eating a piece of fried chicken. <laughs> Well, for, you know, fried chicken's pretty tasty, you know, especially when it's made well and made with good ingredients. Um, but yeah, fried food is really difficult because when um, oils, especially the oils I talked about that aren't good for you in the first place, are heated to a high extent, there it damages the oil and your body can't use it. And so that's what creates the um, the lining of your um arteries to become inflamed and um, eating dietary cholesterol isn't bad for you we we make our own cholesterol and we need it for our brain there's so much alzheimer's happening these days we need it for our brain all these people on lipitor i'm sorry it's, it's all good for your brain you need you need cholesterol for your brain so the reason the arteries are getting clogged is because they are they are inflamed from eating sugar white flour and bad vegetable oil. So when they're inflamed, your body sends cholesterol to repair. So when you, it's continually inflamed and it's continually being sent cholesterol to repair it, that's where the buildup happens. But if, if, you're, if your arteries are all smooth, there's not and no inflammation, you know, the cholesterol is doing what it should do. And it's making your arteries um, smooth so that blood can flow. Yeah, my biggest deal was I was eating fried foods. My first wife was Hispanic, so we were always eating Mexican food. And then I would drink like a fish. I mean, a case of beer probably wouldn't last me a day. And, uh, you know, buying gallons of whiskey to drink on the weekend, that kind of thing. And um, got into a bad drug habit for a while. And wow. uh, now I, I don't drink. Um, I don't do drugs. And uh I don't eat all the fried foods. I won't say I never do. About once every couple of months, I'll have fried fish or something just because yeah. I love yeah, fried it's fish. All right. That's all right. As long as most of what you're eating is healthful. You, you, want to, you want to add health, you know, not take it away. And that's one thing when I realized I read about sugar. Not only is it, does it not give you any nutrients, it actually depletes your body of nutrients because when King is processed all the nutrients are taken out that's what molasses is and that's all the, the nutrition is in the molasses from the sugar molasses. and the, the, the white sugar that's left. yeah it leaches your body of all the nutrients that it needs to to process it to metabolize it in your body so not only does it not give you any nutrition it's taking it away and um so wow that was a real eye-opener um, so sugar is really a tough one. It really is. And Kyle, I, congratulations to you. You've really come a long way and um, it, it's, that's fantastic. I'll tell you, um, if, it, if it weren't for my kids and my grandkids and my new wife, I probably wouldn't care anymore. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, but you know, you shouldn't have that attitude. You should want to do it for yourself. Um, exactly. And, and you know, these, these foods that everyone is so addicted to, and they are addictive. Oh, I'm yeah. not kidding you. I just like drugs. They are addictive. Um, you know, they're not doing you any good, but they taste good. And they're engineered that way. You know, there's labs where they come up with this stuff to put in the food to make it addictive, just like they did with cigarettes. And um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's insidious. It really is. But it's really business. It's just business. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, everyone loves fast food. I mean, oh. it's tasty. It's engineered, you know, to be I'm, tasty. I'm a Whataburger guy myself. <laughs> well one of the bad things that i used to do is i would buy me a case or two of beer and then i'd buy one of those big family bags of doritos and i could sit there in one sitting and eat that whole bag and eat, just eating that junk all the time you know like i said fried chicken all kinds of tacos that weren't good for me uh gosh and you mentioned molasses molasses cookies are my favorite <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, it's, just, it's just very hard to give that stuff up but if you really want to you can do it and there's alternatives and how, how long has it been since you made this turnaround uh, it's been about almost 16 years 
Awesome. Yeah, that's um, just about as long as me too. Yeah, all, all about 20 years now. And um, I'll be 52 this year. So I was 36 when I had the heart attack. That That's amazing. 36. Now, is there heart disease in your family? Uh, my, my dad's side uh, and diabetes as well. And uh, I like to mention my, my triglycerides at that time, 1500. The doctor said he'd didn't know how I was still alive. And I said, because mean people don't die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. If somebody talks about somebody on the news. Oh, they were such a wonderful person. Why did they have to die? Oh, well, you know, it must mean people. We don't get that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to um, talk about alcohol because I, I do like to drink and, um, I used, to, well, sometimes I drink every day, but I try not to. And I went from white wine spritzers to vodka and gin. And then I went back to white wine because I started thinking, okay, you know, you eat well. Well, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather have a glass, glass of wine than French fries. I, I don't know. I, I eat really good food because I like to drink. But um, then I started thinking about, well, okay, wine. I mean, this may sound like, oh, you know, you're making up excuses, but wine is food. Wine, wine is, um, what do you call it? It's um, fermented mm -hmm. and um, distilled spirit. And so is beer distilled spirits. Well, they're distilled. So that's a process. You need technology to, to distill uh, fruit will ferment in nature. So wine still has some food value. <laughs> well, it's made from I mean, grapes. Yes. The alcohol isn't good for you. So, you know, I, I try not to drink too much. I mean, you know, every, everything in moderation, you know, as they say, but you know, um, so yeah, I'm not an alcoholic. I mean, I know people are, some people can't drink, but I, I think, you know, social drinking is, is fine. And like I said, I, I got away from drinking like for a while I was drinking vodka every night and, um, I just thought, okay, this isn't that good. And, uh, so I'm back to white wine spritzers, but anyway, yeah, I can, I can make up excuses for it, but, um, yeah, uh, it's not that good for you. <laughs> I'll tell you, alcohol was probably one of the hardest things that I gave up because I was used to that feeling, you know, yeah. it helped me to, to numb the senses, you know, and, uh, but it was, it was killing me. It was literally killing me. And now I have to get my liver checked every six months. Do you Plus take all the medicines they give me that destroys your liver too? Yes, exactly. It, what, things that are supposed to help you are also are harmful. Do you take milk thistle? No. Okay. It, it's, um, it's a plant milk thistle and it supports the liver. Also artichokes are good for the liver. Um, but, uh, so if, if I'm having like several drinks, you know, a week or whatever, I'll, I'll take some milk thistle. It, it helps support the liver. Um, so yeah. Um, are you still on a lot of medications? I've gotten it down. Um, I, I still take metformin every day and, uh, I have to take gabapentin with, for the diabetic nerve pain. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they've got me on uh, trazodone now, which is better than, you know, taking all the, like, uh, what is it? Uh, oh gosh, what was it? That medication that everybody was taking to sleep and then were doing stuff in their sleep that they didn't know they were doing. Oh, like Ambien? Ambien, Ambien, yeah. Um, Trazodone's more like melatonin. Mm -hmm. uh, from my understanding, it's just a little bit stronger than melatonin. And I, I, I do take melatonin from time to time. Um, there's what's the other one so they gave me glipizide but i had to stop taking that um, yeah the friend i had mentioned earlier he was taking it uh, it's making him nauseous i think some of it makes you nauseous yeah i, but, I got off all the other like the stuff for the depression and all that mm -hmm. uh, meditation has helped me out I and mean, it's not some hippy dippy thing i mean it's you actually talk yourself down from situations yeah like uh, the PTSD would get bad when I had to go into a crowd. So I'd have to tell myself, Hey, look, if you need to leave, there's an exit. Um, you got your wife right here and everything's going to be fine. And once you talked yourself into it, 
it's amazing what you, you can do. I mean, I went on, went to New York a few years ago and was able to ride the subway. <laughs> if I could do that without medication, anybody can do it. <laughs> I know a lot of people are, are struggling with these issues and I, I too was having some, some problems myself, you know, cause I was on, um, I was on a lot of different uh, meds for uh, depression and anxiety and I uh, get panic attacks and stuff like that. But it, the, the gut brain connection, uh, there's a, a diet uh, regimen called uh, gaps gut and psychology syndrome, I think. So they talk about the, the relationship between the brain and the gut. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention about alcohol, it does deplete your body of, of nutrients. It, it yeah. depletes by vitamin B. And um, so anyway, yeah. Dehydrates it, you. Yeah, it dehydrates you. Yeah, that's another thing too. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So, um, so good nutrition also helps your mental well-being and emotional well-being as well. Um, and then there's there's other uh, supplements um, that you can take for um, just uh, you know mental acuity and and stuff like that. But I, I have I have issues with um, anxiety and depression as well, so I, I understand that that struggle. And um, but I, I also do yoga. I've been oh, doing nice. yoga for many years. And, and that, that helps a lot too. So whatever we can do to stay well and feel well, and you know, we're living in some difficult times. So um, we have to take, <laughs> take good care of ourselves. And I think eating well is really important. You know, most people just think, oh, you know, you fill up your stomach, you know, but, you know, eating well is, um, you're really taking good care of yourself and cooking, you know, learning to cook and prepare your meals for yourself is, um, is self-care and it makes you feel good when you can take all these ingredients it's like alchemy you know it's like you take all these things and you you cut and you chop and you prepare and you stir and you mix and then you have this beautiful meal that's doing your body good and it's 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 really a, a wonderful thing and we take it so for granted and we just shove fast food in our down our gullets you know? hey, can i ask you because when i cook it's almost like i, I escape the world for a little yes. while yes yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then it's you get article. this joy when they eat your food, and somebody says, "Oh my God, this is so yes. good!" But my ego gets this big. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful when you can cook for other people, especially too. Yes, I mean, and it's a communal thing to sit mm -hmm. down and at, at a really nice meal and and share with people. And um, I know, yeah, I, I I love I love talking about food and learning about food and um, preparation of food. Yeah, it, it's fascinating to me. You know what else helps me to escape is uh, I started my own vegetable garden. I've got like eight different peppers, different uh, kinds of habaneros. I've got uh, Carolina Reapers, regular jalapenos, cayenne, you know, all these different types. And then I've got cilantro, growing onions, chives garlic my own garlic oh wow I've got an herb garden with sage and thyme and i mean, i just can't even tell you all of them that are out there uh, even growing catnip for my cats <laughs> <laughs> i've got what five different t uh, tomatoes growing out there um, broccoli potatoes uh, cauliflower i mean all these different vegetables it not only is better for you and it's you can just go outside take it off the plant but it it's a type of therapy yeah gardening is and they they talk about gardening as as therapy and how it it, it puts you in another zone mm -hmm. and to connect with the earth you know we're we're so disconnected from from the earth and you know we are, we're walking on the ground and you know, we're electromagnetic you know, beings and the, the earth is electromagnetic and to walk on the ground, sometimes we, our feet don't even touch the ground anymore. When you think, you know, primitive peoples, their, their feet were always on the ground or they, you know, but now we have rubber sole shoes and we're, um, we're walking on concrete. Although, although the electromagnetic field can go through concrete, it's rubber that it can't go through. And we're wearing, you know, our rubber sole shoes all the time. So we're disconnected from the earth. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're, People who's staying inside, or if we go outside, we're slathering sunscreen on. You know, 
I'm sorry, the Indians didn't get skin cancer, okay? You know, I always go back. I always go back. Look at what 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago. You know, we're, we're all here because of them. You know, they, they were healthy. They were well. And, you know, we, they propagated, you know, beget, beget, beget. And here we are. So <laughs> the, these, these healthful things that are, people think are old fashioned or, you know, old wives tales or, or, you know, primitive. I mean, they, they worked because we're here. We're, we're here because they ate real food. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, look at the processing that it all goes through. If, if people would go to some of these plants and take their, their tour, you find out that the government allows so much uh, rat droppings into food, um, bugs, actual bugs in your food, and all kinds of other. Well, uh, it's protein. Kind of <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but every every plant lets stuff like that happen, and then mm -hmm. like you were talking about the corn, they make corn syrup as a sweetener for just about everything. I mean, corn syrup is it's cheaper and it goes longer, and it just it's in everything. It's really bad for you. It's really bad for you. Uh, yeah, the, the, the more we can get back to, to basics and organic. I mean, there was a time when all food was organic. They didn't call it that. It was just called food. Mm -hmm. um, but because of industrial farming, when, when um, uh, industrial agriculture, when big companies took over um, most of the farming, that, that's when they started monoculture when you grow the same thing for acres and acres that's not natural and so then you get pests so then you have to use the pesticides and that's a whole big business and they're making gazillions of dollars on poison meanwhile we're all poisoned and we're getting diseases and having to go to the doctor because of things because we're all being poisoned and but when you when you grow things sustainably there's a guy um Polyface Farms, what's his name? Joel Salatin, Polyface Farms. He everything works together, everything in his farm. And you don't you don't need to use pesticides because you have um the the in a little ecology working there. You know, when you grow certain things together, you know, one one thing attracts certain things that'll eat the bugs that uh, you know it all works together and then he moves his chicken coop around so that they're uh, fertilizing everything you know natural fertilizer so um it's it's really interesting the way you know he's got it figured out but that's the way produce and you know animals were raised for thousands of years yeah they've taken <laughs> over bugs have taken over my brussels sprouts and they have just eaten those leaves like crazy <laughs> oh well there must be something that naturally can deter them or that that we're, would be we're working on it yeah but look, look up joel salatin and and his he's he's a really interesting guy and um he was um he was uh plucking chickens outside at his farm and he said now th this is unsanitary he said you know it's like i this isn't you know I wouldn't pass, you know, agricultural uh, uh, tests, you know, because the, you know, but it's outside. <laughs> you know, he's doing everything naturally. Have you thought about writing a book? No. <laughs> well, you've got so much information. It just seems like it'd be helpful for folks. Wow. You know, it's just, it's just all inside my head and uh, it, it's kind of, um, it's not in or really an organized manner, but um, yeah, because it, it's not just facts because it's the whole philosophy about food is what really interests me too. Another person I really admire is, um, uh, what was her name from in Berkeley? Um, Alice Waters. She's known as the mother of, um, of, uh, slow food, the, the California cuisine movement. She's had her restaurant in Berkeley since the seventies. And uh, I've been lucky enough to uh, go there a couple of times and they don't have a set menu. The menu is whatever, is available and fresh and local. And she contracted out with farmers within a hundred miles of where she is to grow certain things for her. And um, so she just, she's not in the kitchen all the time every day anymore, but she's, you know, overseas, you know, what's on the menu? What, what do we have? What can we make with this? And it's not cheap, but you know, it's really good, really fresh. And it's all made that day from something that was plucked out of the ground day before. And um, 
so her her whole idea of food i really enjoy and she learned it all she's not trained cook she uh, traveled to france and she saw the way uh women in these small little villages in france cook they marketed every day they you know, went and got their fresh vegetables every day and and they prepared their meal that night and so everything was simple and fresh and um local and of course not sprayed with anything so she started um uh, gardens in the schools in uh, Berkeley. So, um, so she thinks, you know, gardening should be taught to children in schools and, you know, know where their food came from and, and they, they grow it, then they prepare it. And um, to really get that, that sense of connectedness to the earth and to your food and your health. Um, so yeah, you know, I love her. Last year when I got my, my pepper crop, uh, we uh, got a dehydrator and we dried out a bunch of them and ground them up into powder. And then there was, I took, what was it? The ghost peppers or the scorpion peppers. I can't remember, but I made a, a sauce out of it. And, uh, I mean, just a little spritz of the, of the, uh, powder, you'd be going, it's hot. In here. <laughs> but there's just something satisfying about doing that on my own and, you, you know, it's, it gets expensive to go get a lot of these vegetables now. I mean, cilantro used to be 30 cents a, a bushel. Now they're on, almost 90 cents. That's ridiculous. I put it outside and I grow it. And it, I mean, it just took off like crazy. So now I can go out and pick it off the plant anytime I want. Sounds like you like spicy food. Oh, but let me tell you, the hotter, the better. I, I, I'm the guy that goes in those places that has to sign a waiver saying that I won't sue them if I have a heart attack, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love spicy food too. And I think it's really good for you. It, I think it, um, it uh, stimulates your immune system, spicy I think, food. I think it has something to stimulate your serotonin too, if I'm not mistaken. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there's some peppers, you, if, if you eat it, you can actually hallucinate on it because it's so hot. <laughs> you should at least get together your best recipes and make a book hmm. i'm i'm always searching for good recipes i like simple things i don't like too many exotic ingredients um so i you know i'm i'm pretty basic and sometimes it's just real simple like i'll just um um bake a chicken breast and steam some vegetables and you know with butter and um, make a salad and and i use um olive oil i don't buy any commercial salad dressings they're they're really bad for you they have a lot of chemicals and sugar and yeah. they use soybean oil because soybean oil is um it's a like a, a byproduct of of soy and, and a friend of mine said he started eating tofu and i'm like why you know and um i said are you going vegan and you know tofu is not good for you especially if it's not organic because it's GMO and sprayed with glyphosate. But anyway, soy, soybeans, soybean oil, not good for you. Uh, olive oil, make your own salad dressing with olive oil. Make sure it's real olive oil, organic. Make sure it's not mixed with anything else. There's, you can look up what are the best. Um, you know, they're pure and they're not mixed because there's like this olive oil mafia, you know, that mixes canola oil in with your olive. No, no. And canola again, highly processed. It's canola is not even a real plant. It's the rapeseed plant, but that doesn't sound very attractive for marketing purposes. So they, it, it's grown in Canada. So they named it canola, Canadian oil. Can and they want to say it's good for you, but it's not. There's too many omega-6s and not enough omega-3s. And if you read all about that, we don't get enough omega-3s. That's why our, we have heart problems. You know, um, Heart disease used to be rare, and now it's the number one killer. Uh, I believe it. I believe it. I mean, 36-year-old having a heart attack, I'm living proof you don't need all that processed junk. You know, I, had a, uh, I have a buddy of mine that uh, he came on the show, and he's, he's vegan, and he's over in uh, the U.K., and uh, I was teasing him. I said, you know that a vegan is an old Native American word, right? And he says, really? And I said, yeah, it means bad hunter. And he, he gets the biggest <laughs> 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 Yeah. That's funny. Um, man has been eating 
animal products since they've been on uh, since we've been on the planet um i really like the weston a price um philosophy as well. He was a dentist in the 1920s, uh, started noticing a lot of uh, ca cavities and misalignment of teeth and um, things that he's, he didn't notice as much before. So he thought it had to do with our food. So in the 20s and 30s, he went around the world and, you know, he didn't, nobody sponsored him. He, he traveled on his own and he was studying primitive uh, peoples and they were easy to find at that time. You could find a lot more primitive people who were living close to the land and uh, He never found a vegan or vegetarian culture. These people all Lived and sustained themselves on animal products and of mm. course they're not raised in you know Confined animal feeding operations. They're not shot up with hormones. They're not um, traumatized um, it, You know, they're not injected with you know, hormones and um, other chemicals. So, you know, people think that meat is unhealthy, but it's not. It's the way our meat is raised and processed that makes it unhealthy. Mm -hmm. You know, meat is, meat is real food. So uh, Weston A. Price uh, has a website and um, they have uh, chapters all over the world and their their books out and pamphlets and stuff like that. So it's based on the, the dentist, Weston A. Price and his studies from from pr primitive peoples and they're all about eating real food as well yeah it's, there's something real about, yeah real food real and real food. i like um i like stuff that's like, more exotic i guess you'd say um like bison oh, i love bison elk of uh, elk steaks are some of the best steaks i've ever had um of course venison which you know most people here in texas have at least tried venison <laughs> and you know there's just there's all kinds of different meats other than just beef from a cow and you know yeah. from uh, pigs and find. some some um game meats are kind of hard to find but certain expensive. stores do carry my noticed sprout and it is expensive yeah sprouts can carry sometimes elk or wild boar or something you can find uh find it but um yeah if, if you can hunt it yourself you know all the all the better um but um yeah, I, I know people don't like to kill animals, but, you know, the Indians used to pray and thanks to the animals mm -hmm. and because the, the animals sustain them. Um, so I always go back to that, you know, basics, primitive, you know, what what is man, what has man sustained himself on over thousands of years? I saw somebody do this experiment or try to, to illustrate what they're talking about, about how we're we're living in a time when, you know, after all thousands and thousands of years, we're, we're ingesting things that weren't, aren't meant to be inside the human body. So look, think about a football field and the whole football field is like the history of mankind, the history of mankind, oh, I almost spilled my water. And, and then like a few inches before you get to the goal line, that's like just, you know, modern times. And so the whole football field is, Hunter gather, hunter gather, hunter gather, and then I don't know. Maybe the the last ten yards or whatever is um, uh, farming and um, raising animals. So, so dairy is pretty new to to us too as well. But then then when you get to this like the last few inches, that's all the processed food. So we're not meant to have all that stuff in our bodies, and our bodies are trying so hard to to rid itself of all these toxins. So that's why we have all these diseases, this explosion of, of diseases. And then, you know, we go and get more, get medicine, more poison to take care of these symptoms that we have because we're not eating properly. We're not eating real food. Well, we're not even really supposed to drink cow's milk, but we've done it for so long, but that's not intended for us. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I have I have a difficulty with this with this argument because I you know I can't take one side or the other because yeah it's true but we have like I said um, agrarian culture and and uh, domesticating animals is at least ten thousand years old but again, the whole football field we didn't 
<laughs> so, uh, and that goes with grains too. When I read about eating less grains and less legumes, it's like, oh no, because those are uh, cultivated. You know, they're not, um, they're not gathered, hunter, you know, gathered. So um, someone explained it to me. If, if you can pull something out of the ground and eat it, that's good. But if you have to, like beans, they have to be soaked and rice has to be cooked. And, you know, so grains are mainly like bird food. You know, birds eat rice. You know, we, I mean, rice, again, we didn't have rice for, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Grains are about 10,000 years ago. So even grains aren't that good for us. So I, I read um, Dr. Uh, Mercola is who's he, his site has been um, uh, censored. But uh, anyway, he taught when he, when I read an article on his site about less fewer grains and legumes, it's like, Oh no. So that means wheat, rice, um, barley, oats, um, and then beans and all kinds of beans. But people have subsisted on, on these foods for, for, thousands of years but like well i last ten thousand years but they're really not that good for you either and because they have um anti-nutrients phyto nutrients um which are a kind of like poison to your body to protect themselves anyway so dairy grains <laughs> all the stuff we're used to <laughs> yeah be better to eat you know mainly uh, uh meat and vegetables that you that grow out of the ground or off of a plant or off of a tree um and occasional uh grains and dairy i mean i love cheese you know i'm not i'm not going to give up dairy although um you know look, look at all the the food products that are that are good for you you know yogurt and you know yogurt and cheese and yeah milk is for baby calves, but, you know, people like ice cream and they like sour cream and they like, you know, look at all these dairy products we have. Mm -hmm. But um, of course they should all be grass fed. Uh, where can you find it? You know, it's hard to find it. Uh, I was buying grass fed milk for a while and it was really delicious, you know, raw grass fed, raw milk, you know, unpasteurized. Uh, and, you know, it's people was were drinking that for, for thousands of years. So, yeah, you know, there's arguments against, you know, dairy and meat and grains. and But when you, when you think about just in the last, you know, 10,000 years what people have been eating, you know, that, that's the food that we have. You know, better to eat something, you know, dairy that's non-processed than to eat, you know, a ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, so the, the more, the closer to nature, the better is my point, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this though. If the doctor told me I had to give up cheese or I was going to die, I would start telling everybody my goodbyes. <laughs> Cause I'm not giving up my cheese. <laughs> oh, I love cheese. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I love cheese, but um, yeah, just everything in moderation. I mean, you, People talk about plant-based diet. Yeah, that's good, but that doesn't mean you you don't you can't ever eat any of this other stuff. It just it should be you know I read somewhere you should have a really big salad you know with all organic and everything, and then a your little bit of your protein and if you want some grains and you know a little bit of dairy. So, but the the bulk of what we eat, yeah, it it, it should be vegetables. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. I had someone tell me this that. If, um, if you're going to have a meal and you have your vegetables, you eat your vegetables first before you eat meats and stuff because it helps you to uh, process your food better. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I do it. Hmm. Why not? Well, I can, maybe that's why in restaurants, you know, they serve you your salad first or, um, but yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure, but I, I was into food combining for a while. And then, you know, I read other places where, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what you combine, but, you know, but I like to read it. I like to read about all of it and consider it all. Um, you know, we can't be perfect. Um, I'm not. You know, do the best we can. <laughs> do the best we can. I mean, I can't eat organic 100% of the time. You know, I, I go to a restaurant you know, it's a free for all. I don't know what I'm getting. You know, I try to do the best I can ordering, but um, you know what? If I want to have a burger and fries, I'm going to have it because every once in a while, I just I enjoy it. I want it. And better to have it and enjoy it on an occasion than to 
deny yourself and, and create that stress of, oh, I want it, you know, have it and enjoy it and then forget about it and then go back to eating your, you know, your organic pasture raised <laughs> grass <-fed, whatever. laughs> We just have to try the best we can. Yes. Yeah. Just do the best you can, you know, every day. And, and if, if you really are craving something, just go for it, enjoy it, and then forget about it and start again, you know, start again. But I find that if I do eat, like, let's say, oh, it's somebody's birthday and they bring out a cake or whatever. It's like, oh, well, uh, I don't feel that good after I eat it. It just kind of doesn't sit quite right. With me. You know, but I, I, I enjoy it while I'm eating it. And then it's like, uh, and then I'm kind of sorry I did. <laughs> Well, my advice to anyone is, number one, get an endocrinologist. And number two, get a dietitian. Mm -hmm. That's how I dropped all that weight. So yeah. it's amazing when you when you decide you want to get healthy, the weight just falls off of you. It's like I didn't try to lose weight, but I noticed when I just started eating better food and not as many um, carbs and um, yeah, that's the, the weight bad. just fell off. Yeah. Yeah, I think they said for a normal sized man, uh, no more than 60 carbs in a day. So I try to keep it under 60 if I possibly can. But most of the stuff I eat is doesn't have really that much carbs in it. I've, I'm like you, I feel yucky if I eat a bunch of junk. So, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so do you don't have any kind of projects going on right now? I don't. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm retired and, um, I'm, I'm really enjoying just, you know, doing nothing. <laughs> and, you know, this time that we're living in, you know, it's like there wasn't much to do for a while, but I've been reading a lot. And, um, I mean, if, if I'm, I'm not seeking out uh, work in the industry anymore, um, like I said, it, it, it got, it, it got to be where it, I wasn't really enjoying it so much anymore. Um, and, um, a lot of things about it that, you know, it's, you know, the long hour and, you know, it's kind of grueling. It can be kind of grueling sometimes. So no, I did it for 40 years. So that was enough. I, yeah, I, I don't, uh, I don't have anything, no prospects, nothing coming up, but, um, you know, I'm just enjoying my leisure time and, and reading and seeing occasional, you know, friends and family and, um, yeah. Well, Just you know, enjoy relaxing. it. I am. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I, mean, I had to retire early. Um, you know, diabetes ended up giving me a, a bone disease. So uh, I can't work. <clears throat> but I didn't want to sit around and vegetate either. So that's why I got into this. So uh, you know, anything to kind of occupy and sounds like you're... That's fantastic. And podcasts that there's they're so popular now they're so much fun and um the ones i've done like i said were mostly showbiz oriented and the, the guys who were doing them, i'm like you know this is such a great thing bringing the you know the performers and the fans together you know because they they can finally you know meet each other and share and um you know all those like fan shows that have been going on and stuff like that so um it, it's been really fun I, i've been enjoying you know sharing my experiences with people and just knowing that wow, somebody really did like what I did. <laughs> it's been fun. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I enjoyed those movies. Uh, Pee Wee was like a big part of my teenage years, you know, and uh, when Pee Wee's Big Adventure came out, I was like, yeah, yeah. I didn't have to just watch Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> <laughs> he did a third movie. He did a third movie for Netflix, and it's called uh, Pee Wee's Big Holiday, I think. And um, I, I was a small part in that too. And um, Joe Manginelli is in it. And it's kind of like Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Now, Big Top Pee Wee uh, was the circus one. It, I don't know, it wasn't quite as good as Pee Wee's Big Adventure, but um, Pee Wee's Big Holiday is a little bit like Pee Wee's Big Adventure in that he, he goes cross country he, and he meets a lot of people that he ran into in, in the other movie. And so he's trying to get to New York for um, Joe's um, birthday party. And so uh -huh. it's all his, his adventures, you know, of that. So um, that's on Netflix. He did it for Netflix. You know? Gotcha. Well, do you, <laughs> are you on social media? I am. I'm on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is Facebook all that you do? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm real 
you know, bare bones, you know, low key. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not very technologically um, inclined or uh, so I haven't bothered to get on anything else. But um, yeah, I really love Facebook. I'm, I'm on it a lot. And um, I have Facebook friends that I've never met in person. And, but, you know, we, we relate and, you know, it's fun. It kind of reminds me of what, when I was a kid, and I would have pen pals, oh, right? Yeah. To people that I didn't even know. You know. Yeah. So um, yeah, that, I'm only on Facebook, right? <clears throat> yeah. We started Facebook because um, it, we were, it was our high school reunion. So that's when Facebook first came out and, mm -hmm. and so uh, that's how we connected with all of our old classmates. And then I didn't really pay that much attention to it. I just had it because of that. And then before I knew it, I was interacting with some old friends and I'd find family and friends I hadn't talked to in a long time. Yeah, and, yeah, same here. And, yeah. And, you know, I, just one day out of the blue decided I was going to do Instagram and then we started doing the podcast. So now I'm on everything. I, I, I don't interact on it very much, but... Uh, we post all the videos and stuff and I'm, I know you're supposed to be on it every day, but I just can't, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Terry, thank you so, so much for coming on the show. And I really appreciate your time. And, um, you're always welcome to come back. Oh, thank you, Kyle. I really enjoyed talking to you and congratulations on how you're turning your life around. And it's really inspirational. And um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really pro, you know, eat good food and, um, and be well and feel well. And so thanks so much for having me. I really enjoyed talking about this because sometimes people get tired of hearing me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found it uh, very, very enlightening for a lot of stuff. So uh, I appreciate it. And uh, thank you. But anyway, really nice. until really the nice next Oh, it was really nice meeting you too. Uh, this was this I'm glad Kevin put us together. Yeah, yeah, me too. Okay. But uh until the next one everyone, uh please take care and be kind be well. to one another. God bless be and well. <laughs> peace. Be well. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favourite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.